All right, Year 7, I'm going to do the rest of the questions from adding fractions. And I'm going to do questions 7 and 8, the third column. So in the last clip, we talked about making sure you have a common denominator to add fractions. So let's have a look at question 7 and see why they're a little bit more difficult. So if I do 7C... And first of all, I see what I've got is I have a mixed numeral. Now, it doesn't matter what order we add things. So I can break this up into parts. I can add the whole numbers first and then add the fractions. And I'm looking at this and this one seems a bit of an easy one to do. So we'll do that straight away. Let's add the... 11 and the 1, I'll go the 11 plus the 1, and then I'll add the quarter and the 2 quarters. Well, the 11 and the 1, that's 12, and 1 quarter plus 2 quarters, remember, do not add the denominators, so that stays as 4, and I add the, denom the numerators and I get 1 plus 2 is 3. And that's done. Well, that was really easy. This is not hard. Well, let's try 7G. I've got 9 and 7 on 11 plus 9 and 7 on 11. Well, again, we'll do the numbers out the front first, so 9 plus a 9 plus the 7 on 11, plus the 7 on 11. Well, 9 plus 9 is 18. Leave the denominator the same. 7 plus 7 is 14. Now that answer is correct, but it's not quite right. And the reason it's not quite right is I have an improper fraction in the back bit. So we'll just leave that 18 alone for a while, and I'll just do this division. This is 14 divided by 11. How many times does 11 go into 14? Well, it goes once, and 3 left over. Now we need to know that we're going to add that 18 and that 1. I want you to just look here at this 9 and 7 11. That's the same as 9 plus 7 on 11. You're actually saying it's 9 holes, and 7 11 parts of a whole. So here, when I've got this 18, there's, there's a hidden plus sign in there. It's 18 holes and 14 parts of 11. Now we know that 14 is too much, so we rewrite that as 1 and 3 11. So then we can add the 18 and the 1, which means we've got 19 holes, or whole parts, and three elevenths. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What about when we have a mixed numeral without the common denominator? Well, again, we can do the same thing. Three and a half plus eight and two thirds. Well, let's add the whole parts first. I'm going to do this a bit quicker this time. Oh, no, I won't. I'll read it right. 3 plus 8 plus a half plus 2 thirds. Well, 3 plus 8 is 11. How am I going to do this a half plus 2 thirds? I need to find a common denominator. Well, the common denominator... I'll get by just multiplying the two of them. 2 by 3 will give me 6. So let's change this half by multiplying top and bottom by 3. Now remember, we're not changing the fraction if we do it the same to both sides. And that will give us 11. And on the bottom, I get 6. And on the top, I get 3, 6. And that makes sense because that's a half. I haven't changed it. 
What about the two thirds that I haven't touched yet? Well, let's multiply top and bottom by two. Now if I multiply top and bottom by two, two by two is four, three by two is six, and now I've got my common denominator. And that will give me 11 and seven on six. And again, I have this situation. I have this situation here where I've got 11 and seven, six. So that's 11 holes and seven parts of six. Well, I can write that a bit better. So it's 11 plus, well, let's do the division. Seven, how many times does six go into seven? Once with one remainder. And 11 plus one is 12 into six. Now there is another way to do this. And if you ask your mum and dad, it's probably the way that they learn. And I'm going to do it now. But you get to choose. Remember, the more ways you know how to solve a problem, the more powerful you will be. So there is an alternative method. Let's have a look at the alternative method. Instead of adding those two parts at the beginning, and I reckon this is a lot harder for this one. Instead of adding those two parts at the beginning, we can make them improper fractions. So watch what happens. Three, whoops, go my black pen. Three and a half plus eight and two thirds. Let's make them improper fractions. So remember, I go here, I multiply, and there I add. We did this in the previous unit. Three times two is six. Six plus one. Oh, seven over two. Let's do the same here. Multiply and then add. Three times eight is 24 plus two is 26. Now I just have a fraction to add. Again, my common denominator will be two times three. So six. So here I'm going to multiply this seven on two top and bottom by three. And that gives me three sevens are 21 on six. What will we do with the other side? Well, we're gonna multiply both top and bottom by two. And that'll give me 52, gee, that was hard, on six. Okay, 21 plus 52 is 73. And do not add the bottoms, do not add the denominators. Okay, so now I've got an improper fraction and that answer is correct. But let's make it a mixed numeral. Remember the division, how many times does six go into 73? Well, I'm lucky I know my times tables. It gives me 12 times with, because 12 sixes are 72, and one left over. And that's the answer that we got before. Now, which method do you think is easier? I actually think this method here is easier. You might disagree and go, I like to make an improper fraction. But I think adding the whole numbers and then adding the fraction, even though in this case we required a little bit of simplification towards the end. I'm going to do the last one from question eight. Now it's a lot harder. And if you try to make them improper fractions, I think you're going to get into a lot, have a lot more work to do. So let's have a go at it. 17 and 8 elevenths plus 7 and 3 quarters. 17 and 8 elevenths, what was it? 7 and 3 quarters, plus 7 and 3 quarters. Well, let's add the whole numbers first, 17 plus 7. And we'll add 8 on 11, plus 3 on 4. Well, 17 plus 7, 24. Now, let's get our common denominator. Well, I'm just going to get it by going 4 times 11. 
which is 44. I don't think there's any other numbers that 4 and 11 will go into before 44. If I look at my 11 times table, I go, oh, 11, 22, 33, and of course 44. And I know 4 doesn't go into 11. 4 doesn't go into 22 either, nor 33. So I'm going to get a common denominator of 44. So what do I do here? 8 on 11. I'm going to multiply that top and bottom by 4. Keep my 24 in there because I need that. 4 times 8. 4 times 8. Well, that's 32 on 44. Let's go to the second one. 3 on 4. I'm going to multiply that by 11 and 11. 3 11s are 33 on 44. So I get 24. 32 plus 33. Mm, that's 55. No, it's not. Oh, lucky I didn't say it. It's 65 on 44. And again, I have that nasty situation where the top is bigger than the bottom, so I keep that 24 there. How many times does 44 go into 65? It goes once. And if I just do the nice subtraction, I'd go 5 minus 4 is 1, 6, oh, 21 on 44. So that'll give me another hole. So I have 25 holes, or hole parts, and 21 parts of 44. Now I reckon that way is much easier than making improper fractions. Anyway, good luck with your questions. Remember, if you're doing the challenge, you need to do column four.